Hey, I'm Zeta Sage Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo and welcome to Australia. Yes, it's finally finished and we are going to go and tour it today. All right, here we are at the entrance to our Australia area. I'm still really happy with this. I like it even more now that it's got uh, an area behind it rather than just a blank map. Gone with the modernist theme here, which is architecture you see quite a lot of in Australia. Um, we've got some exhibits here for the blue tongue skink or blue tongued lizard. There's one there. And then another one for the death adder over here. Mainly picked because of its cool name. <laughs> Very scientific. Uh, yep, yeah, there's one down there. I really like the design that I came up with for this. A little koala hidden away there. Got a little drink spot over here. I'm not sure if this was done for episode one. Don't know if this has been shown or not. I think I might have added it the next day. That just gives our guests somewhere to get a drink. And then we've got this rock display here with the um, traditional Australian art hidden away in the rocks, which I really like. Got our entrance away up over there, and the water terrace is back there. But yeah, let's go in. So we got nine Australian species in here. Uh, I've spent a lot of time over the past week tidying up, um, finishing off all the paths, and just generally making it look nice. You can see our platypus away in the distance there. I've put some access for the um, keepers to actually get into the exhibits here. Um, I think we'll go down this path first of all and check out our first uh, major animals, the koala. You can see our wombat habitat there. We'll look at that properly in a second but we're going to go up and see the koala first of all. Hopefully if they're, uh, if they're out. <laughs> they tend to be out more at feeding time than anything else. So let's take a look. Oh, there's one on the floor, sadly, <laughs> but that's, uh, that's one of the issues with them in Planet Zoo. Never spend enough time climbing. Not much of a show, but that's uh, what you get in real zoo sometimes. This habitat is based on the Taronga Zoo uh, koala habitat. Uh, they've got a big Australian area there, which I really like, so I took quite a lot of inspiration from that. Down here we've got a little food court, we'll take a look at that in a second. But let's head on to the Wallaby Walk or the Wallaby Walkabout, to give it its full title. These dots on the floor, wow, it took me so long to individually place these. These go around the whole area, sort of showing the guests where to walk. So um, yeah, that was not a quick process. So the entrance to the Wallaby Walkabout's here. Got a little soap dispenser there and some custom habitat gates. So we'll go through these and check out the Wallabies. I went for an Australian forest kind of feel in here. Temperate forest. Uh, I think we've got some over here. Yeah, there we go. The wallabies in this game are so cute, as they are in real life. Uh, we've got a little baby one there as well. So they can uh, hop all the way around this habitat into their shed at the back there. They can cross the paths. Sometimes they jump over the um, barriers. Sometimes they walk under them gets the guests nice and close to them. No direct influence for this habitat, I think. Um, took a little bit of inspiration from the Wallaby walkthrough at Yorkshire Wildlife Park, um, but mainly just my own design, really. And if we come out here, this brings us around to the little food court. So we got food there through that little serving hatch. And then we've got drinks through this one. Love the little counters that they introduced a while ago into the game, lets you build little things like this. And then we've got a gift shop over here. This is some workshop stuff in the back here. I think this is uh, Shifty's work, possibly Ricey, I can't remember which one that was. But yeah, the guests can buy. Got some toilets away over there. And then this brings us back round to the wombat habitat. So I went for a really rustic kind of feel here. 
the concept for this habitat is that it's been in the zoo for a very long time. Um, probably had loads of different animals in it over the years. So we've got some wombats playing in their sand pit here. Got a little baby as well. Uh, so I had a few comments about why the why the roof was meshed over, seeing as wombats aren't big on flying. Um, so that's why I probably had birds in here at some point, maybe Tasmanian devils, etc. So it's just a fairly generic habitat. This leads us back round towards the entrance. Over here, we've got a blank space. This is for any new Australian or Oceanian animals that get added into the game. Maybe Tasmanian devils or something, you know, a quoll, something like that. If we do, I've purposefully left space for it. So let's go down to possibly my favorite habitat in this area, the platypus habitat. This is a classic 1930s modernist style build based on the um, habitats created by the Tecton group in England in the 1930s. And this again would be um, a habitat that's been there since then. Here's our platypus right on cue. Really like the, uh, the white concrete really stands out against this orange path and the foliage in the background. So the sort of big idea for this area was that originally the whole area would have been habitats like this. Very uh, beautiful to look at, but not great for the animals kind of habitats. And then over the years, they've been removed one by one, replaced with the more modern things that you've seen. Uh, but this one was deemed to still work pretty well for the animal that it had in it and um, hence it is still in the zoo. So as well as the underwater viewing, we've got some overground viewing up here as well. Gives you a nice view around the rest of the Australian area. More of these dots, which are the pain of my life for the past day or so. Yeah, really good view here. So let's go around to the largest habitat, which is the Outback exhibit. Got some staff buildings there. Put some seating in and some signage so people know where they're going. This is the kangaroo part of the habitat. See one of them there, having a little sleep. I think there's four in here at the moment. I've not had any babies yet. You would have seen that in the intro. And then as we come across to here, we get to the emu part of the habitat where we have just had some babies. Never seen the emu chicks before. They're really cute. Uh, it looks like one habitat, but there's actually a ditch there to separate them to stop the emus from getting into this part of the habitat because they will eat all the plants um, pretty much instantly, according to what I've read. So um, I wanted it to look pretty lush um, with the Uluru in the background. Yes, I finally learned how to pronounce it. <laughs> Thanks to my many Australian friends who corrected that in the kangaroo video. And then over here, we've got a much drier habitat because the emus would eat pretty much any vegetation in here. Yeah, we've got some cute little chicks. Habitat design very similar to the kangaroos, just with uh, less foliage. We've got that fence at the back there separating it as well. And that brings us around to the final habitat, Crocodile Creek, which we just built last week. This is based on the saltwater crocodile habitat at Singapore Zoo, and this one is working very nicely. The underwater viewing really does what I wanted it to. The ability to see the crocs above water and below the water from the same point. They're such cool animals and it's great to have a view like this of them. You can see the Balinese archway in the background as well, which was what I intended when I placed the build here. So really pleased that that's all come together. Got the animal talks up and running as well. So people will sit up in these seats here. When there's an animal talk going on, the talk point's hidden in all that foliage there. Uh, a few questions about shelter as well. I didn't show you me building the shelter. It's a very simple one, but you can just see it back in the distance there. The keeper's going into it. There's a little 
pathway up to it through this door here. That's where the crocs would go if they ever needed to be inside. And then round here is the entrance to the islands area. So I'll just show you that because I've sort of tidied that up and got that ready so that people can get from Australia to the islands now. A couple of these statues here. A nice sign. And there we have the Balinese archway. Speaking of Bali, I mentioned last week that I'm off to Singapore next week to go to all four of the zoos in Singapore, which I'm very excited about. Um, after that, I'm off to Bali. <laughs> so I get to see all of the incredible architecture uh, that I've been raving about while I made the islands area as well, which is very cool. So I'll be sure to take loads of videos, etc., of that. We won't go into the islands. Obviously, we've already done the islands tour. Check that out if you've uh, not seen it. I'll put a link at the end of the video. And that's the Australia area. Let's jump up into the drone and check out where we began with this build. Wow, it seems like so long ago that there was just a big hole between the islands and the water terraces. This is where we are at now. And with Australia complete, the first part of San Bernardino Zoo is done. We now have an unbroken strip of zoo from Amazonia all the way to the islands. And that means that this is the end of series one of San Bernardino Zoo. With me being in Singapore and Bali for the next two weeks, we're gonna have to take a break in building the zoo. But don't worry, I've got you covered with videos for each of the next two weeks. We're going to be exploring some amazing zoos from my favourite creators. And then Series 2 of San Bernardino Zoo will begin. We are going to be building Africa, the largest and most ambitious part of the zoo. I'm going to put a map up on the community channel and the Discord of the zoo so far. Check that out, it will be up shortly. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.